Okay, so today uh, we'll be discussing chapter five, which is about of the book uh, DigiPlot2, which is about a statistical summary. And uh, Gwen is going to lead us uh, through uh, the chapter today. Mm -hmm. So, Gwen, I think uh, over. To Thanks. So, um, and thanks to everyone who's, who's showing up today. It's it's nice to see you, Zainab. Uh, and please interrupt if you have any questions, either of you. It's, uh, you know, I'm here. Hopefully I can answer them. Uh, so uh, here we have the learning objectives. We're going to use ggplot2 to possible to, 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 to deal with uncertainty um, and also uh, learn about um, geometric objects, which best presents uh, your, your type of data. And uh, so let's keep moving. So there's a couple definitions in the chapter. Um, I didn't know this, I, uh, this discrete, uh, which is when you're used to count something. So if you're counting uh, uh, the number, uh, you know, I don't even know. Counting, you know, the number of, of eggs that that hatch, then you have something like that. And then, uh, if it if it can be continuous, then you have something like um, the um, the the um, and I, can you just hold on a second? I actually, forgot my water, and I want to go get it. I'll be back in just. Oh, so you a second. can just say the discrete is for categories. I think. Mm -hmm. Well, well, cat no, because categorical data is more like colors. So, like, what colors, yes. right? And so that's not discrete, okay. right? Because what you're counting actually is categorical. It's like it's like you're counting something like the the data that you're connecting is like red, blue, something like that. And so it's not. And so and so the the data isn't the count, right? The count. So there's discrete values that are like you know that that can only be a whole, like how many how many, I don't even know what, how many apples or something, or, you know, or, or something like that. Like, I'm, you know, or like how many books, how many books on a shelf, right. Or something, something like that. But then the continuous, you can have, um, you can have um, half values. So that's something like, um, you know, like how long, how tall, you know, how, how high, so then you can have half values. And so that's, a, those are the difference between those. So those, 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 but there are categorical variables, which are like, you know, the color of a house or something like that. And that's different. And so then we have um, grobs, which are graphical objects. I always thought they were grid objects. So I was actually, this is actually interesting for me because I thought it came from grid graphics, but grobs are graphical objects. And then you have overplotting. So overplotting is something that happens when you have um, when you have a uh, you know categorical or, or discrete discrete data, and you have a number of shelves that have uh, and we'll deal with that later. But you have like a number of of shelves with the same number of books on them, and then they, and then and then you can't tell. You have to use some kind of um, way to address. Um, to figure out what um, what the uh, you know to 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 deal with the fact that things plot over each other. So um, one of the things that we deal with a lot in as statisticians is uncertainty. So we we often will have um, actually. Let me, does this go down? I think, no, it doesn't go down. Okay, so we'll be dealing with uncertainty, and um, so the uncertainty is something like. Um, You know, we have we have an estimate, but we're not sure, and we have we have error in every estimate because you sample, right? And when you sample, you're gonna get, uh, you know, you're not very you're very unlikely to get the same sample over again, and so uh, so so there's gonna be a certain amount of uncertainty in every single estimate, and um, and so you want to be able to communicate that uncertainty. So for, so for example, if you're um, Weren't there elections in Kenya recently? I think there were elections in Kenya recently, uh, a couple of months ago. And if you're wanting to predict uh, who's going to win, you have to sample. You can't. You can't. Uh, I think in Kenya, everyone has to go back to their home village to vote. Woo, what a mess! 
but anyway, or the place where they were born to vote. And, um, and so you're, you, you, you know, even if you sample people in the village, uh, you know, you're, uh, you know, it's, it's not in any way. I mean, if you, if you, you have to be careful when you, who you sample, but if you sample people in the village or they, you know, they may have a difference and a different perspective on, from people who, um, who, who, who actually sample, who actually vote in that, in that, it, it, from that village because people have to come back from to their to their home to uh, to actually vote. So um so anyway um but but if you have a sample you uh you sample once and you will get um you know an estimate if you take another sample you're going to get a different estimate and so you want to communicate this this um this error in in the estimate. So here's a data frame that and this includes the standard error which is the standard deviation of the estimate divided by the size. Uh, that's the way it's defined. Um, and then you have, uh, and then we plot it, right? And so we have this um, X, Y, and then we uh, have a Y min is, um, is this value Y minus the standard error here. So in this case, it would be, Oh, why? Oh, right here. So it would be 18, uh, you know, whatever that is, 16, 16.8. And then we have 19.2, right? And so that's what this is. That's what this crossbar does. And then we have the 11 and, and we have the, the standard error. So we're more confident in this estimate than we are in, in this one. And these two were equally as, as uh, uncertain. So then we have this one here and then we have this one here right so these are the different um excuse me the different errors in in the uh this is one way to acu 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 um um express and and de demonstrate the uncertainty right so so any place in here we could we could get some kind of you know we we may find an estimate that the 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 possible um, what would you call it? The possible population value could be anywhere in here, in there, or in there, right? And so then that's one way to, to demonstrate um, uncertainty. Another way to demonstrate uncertainty is to do this point range, right? And so this, I think this is base. And so base is this, you have this here, there. And so instead of having a bar like this with the crossbar, I guess you would call it, uh, you have this point. So the, this is the point, and then this is the estimate here. This is a point, and this is the estimate here. Okay. Uh, and then the other one, another way to do this is um, a, a, to put a smoother through it. If, and you see that the smoother, uh, this blue line is the, uh, or connects, uh, you know, the uh, the point estimate for all of these different X values. And then the, uh, this is um, the error here, the error there and error there. So that's that. Okay, and so that's, I, does anyone have any questions about that? Oh, those so far or no? No, I'm, I'm good. You're good. You like, so you like using point range. Which one's point range? Is that one of these? Oh, this yes, one here. Yes, I, don't know. Yes, I like yes. using point range. I think it's a pretty way to, to, to um, talk about um, uncertainty as well. It's a good, I like it too. This one I don't like so much because it, it, it interpolates for all these values and, you know, and you don't know if that's true or not, but I mean, maybe that's useful for something, who knows? And then you have this error bar here. Um, so you can see the different error bars and here's a line range. This one doesn't include the, um, the, uh, the point value. Um, and then here's a ribbon plot. This one, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Whatever. Anyway, all different ways to do it. Okay. Does anyone have any questions about that? I am good. I'm good. Basically. Okay, terrific. So we're going, we'll go on to weighted data. So this happens a lot when you have surveys. So you may have, you may have um, 
a, a survey and um, uh, instead of instead of recording, you know, 50, 50 people who who basically have the same characteristics, you just um, you know you just you have a weight, right? And and then you have this this weighted data, right? So uh, so you have um, uh, right? Does that make sense? So you have um, and um, uh, can you give like an example of weighted data? I guess. Hmm? Uh, can you give a more like robust example of weighted data? I haven't really done surveys. Is it just like, yeah, I don't understand. Them. Okay, so so it's yeah. So it's it. So let's look at. So this is. So I'm not sure. Let me um. Let me open R. I'm gonna um let me stop sharing and I'll share my R screen because I've I've not looked at this Midwest. I'm not I'm really unfamiliar with this Midwest data with with this Midwest uh, data set. But uh, can you see my screen? I'm not sure. I don't know how many of you know what the Midwest is. Does anyone know what the Midwest is? So this is the Midwest. In the Midwest. So is it, is it I'm sorry, I I'm having a really hard time hearing you, Zaina. Uh, Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's a little better. Yeah, I said I, I live in the Midwest. I'm in Illinois. So oh, anyway. okay. Yeah. So um Ola, let me see if I can get your name right. Ola Oluwafemi um may not know. I know he's in Nigeria. And so this yes. is <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the Midwest here, uh, this red portion here. So, um, you know, this is the United States. This is, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, D.C. is over in here. New York is there. And this is Chicago. You know, I don't even know where. I think Chicago is over here. Mm -hmm. um, um, Zainab, where are you? You said you were in Illinois, right? Yeah, I'm in Chicago. So, yeah. It's right You're in there. Chicago, right. So she's right there. Um, this is, I think over here is where Detroit is. I'm not sure. I don't really know the Midwest very well. Oops. Oh, I opened something else. So where's Iowa? Does anyone know where, which one's Iowa? Is, uh, it this, is it this one? Yeah, I think that one's Iowa. The one below it is Missouri, right? Yeah, that's, that's Missouri. Yeah. Anyway, so this is the Midwest. So, so, so there's this data set. That, of which you know I'm completely unfamiliar. Um, that's that's Midwest data. And let me go to. Um, um, I do have a. Uh, oh, here's my. Okay, let me just share a new screen. Um, new share. So I have done some of this, and let's just look at this Midwest and see what it is. Um, you. So this is this is a data. Um, this is I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what. Uh, yeah, I mean, just string. Let me just put question mark Midwest. Here it is. See, it's demographic information. So this is survey data from the 2000 U.S. Census, and so it's it's this is a county identifier. Uh, so these are all different counties in the in the Midwest. Which one is, are you in in Chicago? Which which one is which county is Chicago in? Um, Cook Cook County. Here we go. Right. So that's the the PID number is right here. Um, and uh, so let me just I don't know, just Midwest sixteen. Okay, see, and this is why I don't like, I, I don't like, this is why I don't like um, Tibbles because you can't see the whole damn thing. thing. I, want, I want to look at the whole thing. I want to look at the whole thing. But anyway, so this is the area. I'm not sure what unit it's in, but you can look it up here. Uh, it doesn't say, that also doesn't know. So it's the area and this is the total population. So what is that? 5 million people. The population is very dense, right? The population is the, the total population that's white. Um, uh, the population that's black that are American Indians that are Asian that are per, this is the percentage 
for percentage Asian, right? And so this is poverty line, right? And so this is all this this data, basically a demographic data, um, which I I would say is the you know racial makeup or of the um, of or yeah, and it's demographic data, racial makeup, but also population. Uh, poverty makeup of each, um, what's the word of each, uh, uh, demographic area. I don't know what this category means. Miscellaneous. Mm, I don't know. Maybe that's where the source of the data, who knows in Metro, maybe that means it's in the Metro area or something. So, so what does that help? Do you have kind of sense of what it is? Oh, can you see it? Are you, are you, can you see my R studio? Yeah. We can see it. Oh, good. I just want to make sure I'm still I'm sharing the right screen. Okay. So so this is all of these data. All of these, and so in um, um, Femi, um in the U.S., there's um, there's so so each state. So I showed you. Let me just go back here. New share. Um, we're in. Is this one? I think it's this one. So each state in the US has counties in it, right? And that is like an area um, map of counties in Illinois. So, and so each, this is Illinois here. And I, I you know, I, we pointed out where Illinois was on the map earlier, but then Illinois is made up of all who, of all, oh, well, actually, let me just put it over here. Illinois is made up of all of these little counties that are that are smaller right and so here you have um um all these little counties here this is central uh and this must be cook county over here and 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 they kind of have their own school district and you know whatever i don't even know so that might give you a little bit more context. And that's that's kind of one of the ways that the U.S. is organized by these counties. Does, does that make sense? And so you have a county government and this county school board and and um, and you elect them, you know, every time there's, you know, basically, you know, when you when you elect the president or when you elect other people, you 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 do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. And so it's just like, it, it's like the basic thing like Cook County or Chicago, it's, it's like more, since it, there's more population, um, then they will have more weight than the other smaller counties. Yeah, absolutely. Right, yeah. And then certainly more than Southern. I mean, we can look back at our, do you want me to, do you want to look at our studio again and look at that data again? Are you interested? Uh, I mean, we could look at it, but yeah, I, I know like- um, You understand. I, yeah, I, okay. I, have, I have family down in Southern Illinois, it's like a ghost town, so <laughs> I go from there. Yeah, there aren't, there just aren't a lot of people, right? So Oluwafemi, Olu, that's, it's like, um, let me just look at a map of Nigeria, because I know, let's see, you're not in, are you in, are you in um, Lagos? Am I right that you're in Lagos? No, I'm in Ibadan, I'm in Ibadan. Ibada, I don't even know where Ibada is. Is that Ibadan or no? Yes, Ibada. I. Oh, did I say it wrong? Is it Ibadan? Wow. Yes. Okay. See, there you go. See, I didn't even know I said it wrong. I'm, you know. Oh, okay. So here's you are in Ibadan right here. Yes. Right. And so, and so this, I'm sure that like Lagos has a lot of people, right? Um, Iba, Ibadan, Ibadan, sorry. I always say it wrong. It has, um, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that it has fewer people than Lagos and then um, Abuja. I Lagos is the capital. Am I wrong? No, it's Abuja. Abuja is the capital. Okay. Abuja is the capital. Well, you know, I've been wrong before. So there you go. And then, um, yeah. And so, you know, it's like, out, I, I, you know, up in here in the Sahara, I'm sure you have fewer people, right? And so, you know, that's just, it's the same thing for the US. Does that help? Yes. Okay, so here we go. So here we have, um, 
each row of the data for frames. Okay, so now we have this, and and what I forget what we're talking about. We're going to talk about weighted data, right? And so, um, so we have this percent white, and and, and I guess the point that I, that I'm making, uh, you know, and then percent below poverty, and then we have, and then we make this geometric point, right? So, um, what you see here is that um, as uh, the percent, you know, I, this looks like a, a negative trend to me, right? Um, there's a lot, uh, Illinois is a, and, and the Midwest is very, correct me if I'm wrong, Zaina, but it's generally a lot of white people. Um, it's, it's less, um, less, um, diverse than other parts of the U S there tends to be in the U S there tends to be a lot of, um, let me just go map of U S there tends to be a lot of, um, there tends to be a lot of diver a lot of diversity along the coast, but then the but then the a coast here, but then in the middle and like in the Midwest, it tends to be very, 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 very white. And Chicago probably is the exception for that. I, th I think Chicago and Detroit also as well. Um, but the, but the tends you know tends to be that way. Okay, so as um as as the uh percent white increases then the then the percent below poverty decreases right so you have that and this is um yeah so that's what this this plot is shows we want is you know it, how how does this relate to population right because this could be some very little town this could also be some very little town uh, little, you know, this could be in Southern Illinois where there's no people or if this, and this could be Chicago where there's lots of people. So you want to, you want to look at it in, in terms of, of, of population, not just in terms of, of these two variables, because they can, can get a lot more information if you look at it that way. So then we do this and we look at by population. So here we have the percent white percent below poverty, but then we actually, we size it, right? So we use the size one and we have this population total and we divide it by a million, right? And so then you can see here that um, this little, this is very small where some of these are much bigger. And so, and so you can, it, 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 uh, it, it's different, right? And this tells it which, you know, so this is half a million, I guess it does, uh, it's a, what is it called? What kind of scale is it? Exponential, right? Because it doubles each time. So then populations and millions, this is half a million. So these are really tiny little counties. These are the places in Southern Illinois, right? And then this is probably Chicago. Um, and um, and um, you see there, okay. Any questions about that? No, it's really good explanation. Mm -hmm. And so what impact does this have? Well, there's, there's a huge impact and, um, why, and that is because you can set, you can make, put a smoother through here with un, an unweighted smoother, right? Like this, or you can put a smoother through, uh, with the weighted data. And this is not the best view. Let me go over here to ggplot2. I'm going to get the book because I like it because you can look at it side by side. This is not, this should be side by side in my, in my view. Um, and so here's weighted data. And you can see the two next to each other, right? So if you look here, it, it can be quite kind of misleading, could be quite misleading, right? Uh, because uh, this, this slope is much more, uh, is low is lower, right? It's much, it's uh, steeper. Whereas this one is, is much more, this is, this deals. So these points here, pull this plot up, pull the, pull the, uh, pull the, um, pull the, pull the linear model or the line up. Whereas this one allows the weighted data and it allows this point to pull it down, right? Cause this is Chicago probably. So does that make sense? Okay. Sure. So those yes. Yeah. So those are the difference between those two. And all I've done is I've asked it to, um, to weight it by the population total as opposed to not weighting it by the population total. Okay. And so that's that.
Okay, and the other thing I, I wanna point out about this that I quite like is that it says guide equals none. And so they've removed the, uh, whatever it's called, what's it called, the legend, right? So this one uh, also doesn't have the legend, but if you look up here, it has the legend right there. But then as you go down, we don't have the legend anymore. Okay. So now let's just look at the um, or the plot of the percent percent that are below poverty. And we have, uh, this is the, the plot. Um, and um, then we uh, have the bin with, and this is the, this is a percent below poverty. And this is the number of counties that have this percent below poverty. So it's kind of, um, you know, a right skewed distribution with this huge long tail. We have some, a county here that has a very small, has a lot of people below poverty. Um, uh, but we can also weight this by the population total. Uh, and so it makes it, it's much smaller here, right? So this, this one uh, is not weighted by the population total, but then if you wanna weight it by the population total, to see, you can see how how uh, some of them. I guess they they are bigger or something. Bigger. I'm not sure what the, you know, exactly what the, what it does underneath underneath it, but it makes them bigger. So it's a it's a completely different distribution. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. So this Y label, is it correct? Apparently not. Let's see how they change it. Population in thousands. All oh, right, see? So here they, I, I think they don't like this. Uh, this is million, isn't it? Six million, and now they have to divide it by a thousand here so that they, this is now in thousands, right? So. There you go. So it looks like, um, let's see, what does this mean? So this is, is this, does this mean that at about, what is it, 14% there, eight, I don't think there could be, oh, maybe, I don't know how many counties there are. I want to go back to R and test and check how many counties are there that are, that are, that have, oh no, because this this wouldn't be total number of counties because it's weighted, right? So this this looks much more familiar. This is, this is less, than, those ones are less interpretable. So this is number of people, I think, right? This is number of counties up here. Oops, this is number of counties here. And this is, this makes sense to me. Right, so we have, uh, you know, whatever this is 10, 10, 11 percent. We have, you know, 45, 48 counties that have that are that have uh, about 10 percent poverty. But this must be the population, like how many people live in each in a county that has this many that has this uh, a many amount of people below po the. Uh, the poverty line. Does that make sense? So this is a population. So this is the number of people. So this would be 8 million people live in counties that have about a 14%, 14% where 14% where, where of the people are below the poverty line. Does that make sense to people? Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's what they're doing there. And that's that's it answers a different question. That the 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 one above is a, is you know uh is 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 interesting as well, but this answers a different question. And as and you look here and this one there's only a very small number of people uh that live in this county that has a very high poverty line, which makes me wonder if it's really, really rural and everyone just grows their own food. So um, 
you know, everyone's like a farmer and grows their own food. I don't know. Okay. So, um, let's keep going. So, uh, and then here we have the populations in millions. So we divide by um, a million and then, and it's, you know, this is about 8 million, which I think is what we said before. So that's the same conversation that we had there. Okay, any questions about that? I am okay with it. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering, Olua Femi. Okay, so now we're going to talk about diamonds and displaying um, the diamonds data set, which is a, a this is a data set that I'm really familiar with in R. Um, and so here's so this is really this is not something that I've saw before. So it's interesting to me that this is the depth um, here, Z depth. So that's one of the variables that we'll be looking at. And this is the Z or Z. So, so I lived overseas. So I always say Z sometimes, and I completely apologize. It's, it means Z in American English, but in British English, it's Z. So this is Z depth, and this, this is the Z value. Um, and and this is the X value, and this is the table width. So, and then this is the Z value. Um, do you want to, to, should we look at the data set before we, are, are either of you unfamiliar with the diamonds data set? I am familiar with the diamond data set, but I don't know for Zainab. Yeah, I'm familiar with it. Okay, so then, Okay, so then I'm not going to go and look at it because that's overkill. So we're going to be looking at uh, the diamonds data set for this one, for this section on displaying distributions. And um, here we have um, one one dimensional continuous data. The histogram is arguably the you know it's the most kind of well known. Uh, you know, I don't even know geome. I guess we call it a geome. So here we have the uh, the depth of the data set, which is this. I guess it's this value here, right? So it's how big is this triangle portion of the of the diamond? And um, you can see that it's. Um, but then you know it's very important to pick a pick an appropriate been with one thing. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure what unit this is in, but it's, you know, we're using about a 10th and then we have the limb is 55 to 70. And so here we have, uh, this is what the distribution likes, looks like, it looks completely normal to me. Um, you know, it's probably steeper on this side than that side. So it goes down uh, quicker than it does on uh, the other one. Um, let me see, on the on the, the right side then on the left side. Is, is that the right way to say it? I guess so. Okay, so you wanna in, adjust your bin or, or the, the and the X limbs, the, the limits to, to have a good, so you have a good look, a good look of the histogram. Um, and you only, yeah, there's no hard or fast rule and everyone, this is hard for, for some people because they, you know, they often think that statistics is part of math and math always has a formula. You have to find a formula, you get the right answer, da, 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 da. but data visualization, the visualization really isn't that way. Um, um, and so for your audience reader, ensure you add a caption for your scale. Yeah, I don't know what that means. What does that mean? Does anyone have any ideas for your audience reader? Ensure you add a caption for your scale. I don't know what that means. So I think what that means is that whatever bin width we are using, maybe in the maybe if you are to publish that figure, we need to specify in the caption that we use so 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 bin width. Uh, I see. For the okay. I see. So, so you would, when you caption this plot, you would have, okay, that makes sense. Okay. So, um, so then it's saying, if you want to compare distributions, uh, uh, you can, and show multiple histograms, you can use this facet wrap. 
Uh, and so facet wrap will have different plots and use color and a frequency polygram um, or a conditional density plot, which is um, fill, you position equals fill there uh, to display it. So if we look here, we can see we have this uh, frequency plot, the bin width, and here are the limits, right? And so I'm not sure, this is cut of the diamond. I'm not exactly, I don't remember what these are. I think it's like um, very good, good, I think. Those are what those values are, but I'm, I don't really remember. And then you have the limit here. So you, so you can see the different, what the distribution looks like for, for different values of the variable cut. And then it zoomed in for 58 to 68. Okay, and then here's another one. This one used position equals fill right here. And so then it's, it's conditional on this, uh, depth value, what percent are of this, of, of have this cut, this cut, this cut, and this cut, right? So it's an interesting plot. You can see here what's interesting. I think what's most interesting about this plot is that, is that these purple, so you, you wouldn't have known. Well, I guess you can see that the purple is, is the most important takes over over here, but, uh, it's not as clear as it is in this plot for sure. Right. And so that's interesting. Um, and so purple, basically it it's the purple cut is for the bigger diamonds is what that means. Right. Uh, or the purple, uh, variable, I don't know. They, they removed the legend of, so who knows what it is, but, but whatever cut that, whatever, um, kind of cut this is, they're mostly used for bigger diamonds. And then the other interesting thing about this plot is that they all at, there's a huge, um, at this, what is this, 62, this would be, what is this, 63.75, I guess. Um, so what is this, 63 maybe? So that's maybe at 63. Um, it's almost like there's a completely different, you know, completely different distribution. It's like the better, or or the, I want to say these colors take over, become much more important. And, and it's like these, this one is really important for, you know, for this one, you know, for these values, I'm not exactly sure what they are. And then these ones are really become, this one becomes really important in this part here. And then the purple takes over. So it's a, it's a really interesting distribution, I think. Whereas here, it looks like um, the yellow is not so important. So throughout the middle of, of the values, the, the yellow is, uh, is the most important, but then, um, but then here the, this one is becomes, is this the most important. So anyway, does, is that, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So then you can go, or, or is, is the most common for, for these values. Okay, so you can also plot plot uh, the density using the geom density, and you use a density plot when you know the underlying density is smooth, continuous, and unbounded. So here's the density plot for the depth. And then we fill it with the same cut here. Uh, and so here is the depth of the diamond. I don't remember what we had over here. This was, was this all depth as well? Yes, this is all depth. So if you remember, that's kind of the, the triangle, the height of the triangle there. Um, right. Which I, you know, and I think that shows the same thing that we were talking about before. So here, this one becomes most important. Here, this one is in in these in in these the range of from here to there. These are the most important, and you would you'd want to estimate these ranges. I guess it's um, from sixty three to maybe sixty three and a half, and then from sixty three and a half to above. We only have that. You know, these are this is almost exclusively this cut. Very interesting. 
It is often the case and advisable to sacrifice quality for quantity. The following three types of graphs provide examples of this thought. Yeah, so it looks like this is the clarity data set. And so you're looking at the depth of the data of the, of the diamond, which is the bottom triangle part um, uh, based on the clarity, right? So, um, So this I1 has the most, uh, you know, is has the most variation in the middle. And uh, anyway, I can see these different box plots here. Whereas this one looks like it, it almost, you know, it gets as, as I want to say this, the, as the clarity, I want to say increases, but I don't know, I'm not sure. For the clarity of IF, it looks like it's, um, it has the, the really a small amount of, of variation in the in the depth, much smaller than in for the I1. Okay. So here we have carrot depth. And this is a box plot for, and then it looks like we cut the carrot at one tenth. Yeah. So, so, so it's saying that you can use a box plot with both, uh, up here, you can use it with, um, categorical data. And then down here, you can also use it with, um, continuous data. So you can have this cut with caret equals 0.1, and then you can look at the different values of, of depth for how does depth vary over, over caret. And that's, um, it's interesting because you would expect them to be related because carrot is the weight of the diamond, right? And then if the depth is bigger, and when the carrot's bigger, but it looks like, you know, I wish they'd, they'd done the, um, what do they call it? Notch, notch equals true. You can do notch equals true. And then it puts in the 95% confidence interval. I mean, there's enough data there, that, but, but um, you know, looks like, anyway. Oh, this is what I wanted. Here's the violin plot. So the violin, the violin plot is, is very similar to a density plot, but it, but it's, um, but it's a, a density plot, but it's reflected. So you reflect the density plot here. So this is the I1 and you look at that. You can see so much more by looking at the, the look how, oh, see, so, so I was saying, see that the, the variation here was much smaller than the variation with this one. You can see that much clearer in this plot than you can see. Look at all of these look, you know, almost like they're, you know, they have similar variation in the middle sections. This one, this one has a, you know, that the only variation is in the, um, really looks like in the, in the, um, in the, in the, you know, the, the tail, right. They have differences in the tail and this one has a huge amount of variation in the tails, but it's, but, but it's, you know, very, very centered in the middle. Very interesting. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, carrot depth, right? And so now we have, we're using this cut width here again with the carrot and then looking at the depth and then we're doing the violin plot, which is so much nicer to look at. Look at this, yeah. And so this is one carat is a, a very common um, diamond size. And it also has a huge amount of variation in the depth. So it could, which means that for one carat, you can have diamonds that have like really fat tops and really thin bottoms, or you can have diamonds that have really fat bottoms and really thin tops. So that's really interesting. Okay. So, and then... 
I have, um, I've done some of these, draw a histogram of price. I have them done. You want to see them, but um, should, should we go through them now or do you want to come back to them um, after we do the rest? Of oh my goodness, we only have 10 more minutes. <gasps> I'm, yes. taking up, I'm taking up so much time. So we'll just keep going because I, um, but I have done those. Um, so let's deal with overplotting. So overplotting is when, you know, it's really hard. So this is this is a uh, normal distribution, so it's it's continuous. So and it's it's our norm, right? So it's uh, mean zero, standard deviation one, and so it's very you know. But you can see that there's a lot of density in plots over in in the center, and then it's it's um, you know it's it's much it's a bit like a mountain, right? That's that's steeper in the middle, and then much more, and spread out a little. Um, and then here we have uh, shape equals one. So you can have hollow circles. Here shape is, is 96. Uh, and so I guess that's a pixel size. So it's very small and you can see that there's more points here. And alternative ways using large data sets, you can use alpha blending if you specify alpha as a ratio. So here you can use the alpha blending, which means that it's there, it's it's how much um, I forget what they call it. The um, how how clear it is. There's a C word that that transparency. That right, transparency. That's the word. Right. So it's how it's how transparent the plots are. So when it's darker, you can there's more there's more points, and when it's lighter out around the edges, there's less. And then here is this is one third. This is one fifth. So it gets bigger. Uh, around the edges, and this is even more uh, more transparent. Um, and then geometric jitter is is another one that you can use, but it's not really best when you have this kind of uh, a two two dimensional distribution. It's it's more yeah, it has some discreteness, right? So if you have discrete data, and so here is. Um, Another one that you can do since a two dimensional plot and you can have a, a geometric bin. And then here's the, uh, here we have, uh, this is a default number. And then here we have bins equals 10. So then it, 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 I guess chooses 10 bins going from, you know, 10 different uh, number of bins. And then here's the hex bin, a geometric hex plot, which is quite nice. And so the counts are, are that, and here's with hex bins is 10. So this is fewer hex bins. And another deal, deal, approach to dealing with a world is add data summaries, right? So now we'll go a little bit and talk a uh, about data summaries. And so we have stat bin, stat bin 2D, two, two, two um, and these, uh, combine the data into bins and count the number of observations in each bin. We also have this. So here we have this diamonds and we are counting the number of how many colors there are in that, uh, how many diamonds of, the, of each color. Um, and then, but if we want to know the mean price, Right. So this answers a different question. This is the mean price for this colored diamond. We can plot it like that. So this this diamond is uh, costs about uh, what five thousand. If it has, if it's color J, uh, so it increases. This this must be quality quality as the the color increases or the, you know, the color, I don't know, the measure of color improves then. Um, so D and E basically have the same <clears throat> average price, but then um, as the color, I don't even know what color it means, what those different context means. But anyway, so then we have, this is table and depth. And I think table, if I remember properly, I only have five minutes, so maybe I'll just, um, oh, but we only have one more question. So let me just go, What what is table diamonds data? Yeah, 
So table is this part here. Okay, so table and depth is this part there. Um, and then we have um, the table and the depth and, you know, it's saying how is the uh, the width kind of the width and the bottom triangular part of the how are they related right and so this is um let's see so this is a this is a one that is is both you know i want to say i want to say um thin you know it's not too fat and it's also um short um, this one is table, this one is thin, but it's much longer and, you know, so on and so forth, right? And so you can see that there's a high number of concentration around here with this. Okay. Um, and so we have table depth. What is this? Geom raster. Oh, and so this is the mean, right? And this is the mean price. So now we're looking at the mean price, right? So here we're looking at the, the mean price and this is, yeah, so we have a lot of diamonds that are, you know, have um, the table is about uh, 68 and then the they're about, you know, 50, I mean, 58 in, um, in what's the word in, you know, or our, our length. Right. And so we have, looks like this, there's a lot, you know, it looks like this is a really, um, this depth around in here seems to be quite common, <laughs> right. Likes the, that likes this depth above, you know, above, let's see, 55. So this is, oh, above, you know, above, you know, right, right around six, right below 60. It's very common, which is interesting. Okay. So we have simple GMs where there's a, a one-to-one -one correspondence between rows and the data frame and physical elements of the geome and then statistical GMs. Uh, so we introduce some kind of, um, oh, and so then we, we go into this whole faithful data set. And the faithful data set is, um, it's data from a, um, um, I'm not really, let me see if I can remember the word. It's, it's a seismic activity where water comes up out of the ground, a geyser, it's a geyser. And so this is how many eruptions it has, how, how long do you wait between erupt, how many, let, let me see, how long do you wait? And, and uh, this is how long you're waiting and this is how many eruptions you get. So as you wait longer, you get more eruptions, okay? Um, and so in here, that's showing the same thing. There aren't very many around here, right? But it looks like this is, uh, as, as you get more er eruptions, you have waited for a longer amount of time. And so then bubble plots work better. So you can see there's these bubble plots. I quite like this, but you have to use a small data set. And so we, they've taken out, um, you know, at the 10th one. So they start with one and then I think they start with 11 probably in the 21st one. So it's a smaller data set. And, um, and then they've taken that out. Oh, and I'm done. Phew, no more. So here's some meeting videos, but we, we, uh, we've gone through it all. Okay. Any other questions or how was that? Hope that was helpful. For me, I don't have question. And I want to, I don't know if Zainab have any question. No, I don't have any question. That was uh, really helpful. And um, yeah, thank you for like going more in depth and explaining things um, like from my perspective and 
from um, families perspectives so okay i think uh thank you very much so let me just put stop in the chats uh, you can 